Hi and welcome everybody to this episode of Storytelling in VR. In this one we're going to see how we can use Timeline to control our animations. Let's dive right in. In our last video of this tutorial we saw how we could use Unity's animation rigging package to control elements on our character such as our arms and our head. Uh, and now this week we're going to start tying the animation all together. And this week we're going to start having a look at how we can use Unity's Timeline to put together our animations. So Timeline in Unity works great for this. We'll have a lot more flexibility and control over what's going on in our scene. So we're going to go up to our VR for storytelling assets. I'm going to right click, create a folder. I'm going to call this animation. And then inside my animation folder, I'm going to go create and make a timeline. And I'm going to call this timeline cabin scene one, for example. And then in my hierarchy, I'm going to right click and go to create an empty object and we'll call this one cabin timeline. Make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. And then on here, we're going to add a component. And the component we're looking for is the playable director. So go ahead and add that on there. And then we can drag in our cabin scene one onto the playable director. By default, this is marked as play on awake. So as soon as we hit play, anything we've got on that timeline will start going. So to see our timeline window, if you haven't got it up, we're going to go to window sequencing timeline and then it's going to open up the timeline window just here and i'm going to move that out way. i'm just going to dock it down here actually so this is like the playhead and we can move this left and right and scroll through our timeline and then on the left here this will be all the all the little individual components that we're looking to control so you see we've got our character here it's our cabin character our cabin it's got our animator on here for our ca cabin character if i click on the animator you see it's going straight to sit first to take this out when i go ahead and press play now there's nothing in my timeline so nothing's nothing's going to play and my character should just stand there in exactly the same position we see him here which is great so there's no kind of default animation on him at the moment so if we were to go back to our cabin timeline right click in our in the panel here and we'll go to animation track so looking for an animator so we can drop our cabin character animator in there and we can then right click in the timeline view and go from add from animation clip and you see here we've got our sitting idle we're going to put our sitting idle in here and now you can see that as we can scrub we can scrub through our timeline and you see our character sat down he looks a little weird because we've got those uh, the IK constraints. Let's say we didn't want them on at the minute. If you remember from last video, we can go ahead and turn the weight off on those. So when we go back to our timeline and scrub through, you see his arms are where they should be. And in, in a bit, we'll look how we can animate these, um, the targets for the IK. But we can just see now that we've got our timeline, he's just sitting there. And this clip's eight seconds long. If we wanted it longer, let's say we wanted to go up to 20 seconds, we can click on the clip. You see it's got sitting idle here, it's got L1 and L2, so that's kind of looping like four times. That's great, it's looking really good. So it's just going to sit there for a minute. So that's how you go about animating our character, well, at least for using the mix of my animations. So our VR is going to start up and he's just going to be sitting in his chair. But what about if you want him to reach out and turn on the radio? We can still do all that through timeline. So let's take a look at putting his arm on the desk. And to do that we're going to override his animation and that's really easy to do using timeline we can just click on this um layer for animation here right click and go add override track and then if we go ahead and hit the record button and go and grab the arm target and then when we move it now you can see we can move his arm into position into the starting position at least where his arm's going to be when we start running the game if it helps, we can turn the lights off just so we can see a little bit easier. Maybe his arm's just resting on the table, just like that. And then as his animation plays through, you can see now that his arm's one and truly fixed to the table. So then let's say we start our game. It's going to start from zero. It's going to go on. And then maybe after like five seconds, once you just had a good old look around, he starts, he goes to turn on the radio. So I'm going to copy the position of my right arm target. Just going to copy the component because I'm going to paste these values back in a second. Let's say he reaches out, turns on the radio, and puts his arm back. So he's going to have to reach out to the radio. That movement probably only going to take like let's say a second. So we go to six. We can move the arm target towards the radio. That's just there, and we'll put it back to five. And we'll go copy, paste component values. So it starts off from the beginning. So he's going to reach out like that, and then maybe he 
turns it on and then pops his arm back. So we'll paste again there. And then we want him to leave it in place for a little bit. So while we're at six seconds, we'll copy it. And then maybe give it a little bit of time for it to turn the switch on. Then go paste component values. Then it's going to reach out, turn the switch on, and then put his arm back. So let's have a look, see how that plays out. So his arm may take a little bit of time, too long to get there. That's kind of weird. So you can double click on here and it's going to bring up the keys. That animation, we can just slide them all over a little bit. So we just move those keyframes about around a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't take too long to reach out to the radio. So it reaches out to the radio and then puts his arm down. All right, so we can stop recording there. Yeah, the radio is a little bit far away. So we wanted to, let's say we wanted to move the radio to maybe like there. Just to make this animation work easily. I mean, what you could do if we were spending lots of time on it is um, as he moves in um, with his arm like that, um, his whole waist could start to move forward. That's another way of doing it. Or you could do it <laughs> my way, move the radio, which is a little bit big. So let's put it at 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. There we go, that's a little bit more believable. Let's say he reaches out to about there, turns the radio on. Awesome. So he's sitting there listening to his radio, just finished his tea, wants to know what's going on in the world. Puts his arm back. Um, we can go ahead and add sound effects here later. Let's run that in VR, let's see what that looks like. There we go, so he's sitting at his table, turns the radio on. Nice. We want to make sure his head's looking at the radio for when he's looking to where the, the on button is. So we can carry on using this um, override that we've got here. So we, you can rename this animation rigging override if it makes it easier to remember what that's doing. So we can go ahead and hit play again and find the target for his head. It's just there. His head targets all the way over there. So let's set it so he's just kind of maybe staring longingly into the flames of the lamp. And then it's going to get to about four seconds. Let's copy that because we need those. We need to make sure he stays looking at the lamp. So we copy that position. And then at five seconds, he's going to look at the radio. So we can move the target towards the radio. Now back to four seconds. Let's move the target back to the lamp. So he stares at the lamp and then the target's going to move to the radio. It's going to move it on. And then maybe he looks back at the lamp. So we'll copy the value from where it is last looking at the switch so about there we'll copy that copy that and as he's putting his arm back he goes to looking back into the flames motor values so there so it goes from there looks at the radio turns it on then looks back at the flames let's have a look and see what that looks like ah oh, his head didn't move and that is because we didn't set the weight back so if we go back to the rig for this guy look at the rig so that's all on one for the hands, but the head rig is on zero, so let's put it all the way back up to one. Let's run that again. There we go. Now he's looking at the looking at the lamp, looks at the radio, turns it on, looks back at the lamp. That's looking really good. So the next part is to go ahead and add some sound effects to that to bring it to life a little bit more. So now that we've got our animations in there for him sitting down, turning on the radio, let's use timeline to add in the sound effects for when he clicks on the radio. Um, I actually recorded this and did a little bit of editing on it to make it sound like it was coming from the radio. And uh, again, this is include this will be included in the project once I upload it to Patreon. All it was was just me pretending to be a radio presenter, um, putting on a, like a, a kind of country accent, so it sounds a bit funny. Um, but it's only really to convey the idea. So um, the guy reaches out, turns on the radio, and that's when we're going to activate the audio. So in order for this to work, we're going to need to go to our radio object in the game. We'll click on it in the scene and we're going to add to this an audio source. And I'm going to set the minimum range that's so quite close. And then the maximum range um, don't need to be about 10 meters, really. And this is going to be quite near 3D in terms of its spatial blend. And we don't want it to play on awake. So that's all we need. As long as that's got an audio source, we are good. And then we go back to our cabin timeline and we're going to right click in the timeline and we're going to add in an audio track. 
Let's looking for an audio source. This is the one we just set up. So we're dragging our cabin transistor radio. And then as soon as he goes and reaches out, and you've got these keyframes here. So this will be where the click happens. So turn it on and he comes back. Halfway between those two, we'll go ahead and add add from audio clip. And we want radio. I'm going to put radio station V02 here because this is the clip that I want to use. I'm going to move that up. So good. And then it starts playing the radio. Let's go ahead and test this out in VR and see how it sounds. You're listening to 49.7 FM Country Radio, your local radio station. Before we play our next song, we've got a caller coming in on line one that's desperate to share some information with us. Hi there. I was just driving out there on the county highway on um, Route 64, I believe. And I looked to me, I looked up in the mountains in the distance, and I can see some... So it's working, but it's really, really quiet. So um, <clears throat> on the radio, I'm going to make sure that the volume's all the way up to one. Uh, and I'm going to want to bump it up a little bit. So this we can add in um, a mixer, audio mixer. So we, I'm going to go back to my project window and where we've got audio. I'm going to right click and create audio mixer. And this is going to be cabin VR, just call this mixer. And then if we double click it to open it up, it'll also open up the audio mixer. The master I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to create a new group. Uh, and this is going to be called the radio. And I'm going to bump this up maybe like 10 decibels. That might be too loud, but we'll give it a go. We'll go back to our cabin transistor radio and we're going to drop in. Um, we're going to click on a little circle and add in our radio for its audio source. Let's go ahead and test that out now. You're listening to 49.7 FM Country Radio, your local radio station. Before we play our next song, we've got a caller coming in on line one that's desperate to share some information with us. Hi there. I was just driving out there on the county highway on um, Route 64, I believe. And I looked to me, I looked up in the mountains in the distance, and I can see some strange bright lights. And I, I don't know if anybody else has been able to see them. But yeah, I, well, I'd love to know what, what was going on out there. Well, thank you, caller. So anyone that's out there in the mountains, keep an eye on the sky and listen to these tunes. <laughs> that sounded awesome. So we've got our, we've seen here in this video how we can go about using timeline to create some of our animations and we've also overridden that so we can control our arms and heads separately. So that's really the first 30 seconds of this VR storytelling piece and this radio clip now really sets the stage for where the story is going to go. And then after this, we can be looking at some animating some lights outside, maybe animating that guy a little bit more. But essentially, it's just building on what we've already got here. All the foundations are now set. We've got timeline in there. We've got the XR interaction talk in there for the VR. We've got the animation rigging for the character. <clears throat> so really now all the items are in place. It's just a question now of, of animating them and creating the story. What generally takes the time with these things mostly is the animation um, and, and all the VO and that kind of stuff. And that's just kind of piecing it all together now. So next week we'll take a look at adding this character, making him stand up and maybe move over to the window after he sees some lights circling outside of the cabin. Don't forget you can grab this project from Patreon which includes all the assets and all the scripts. And if you like what you've seen here and want to stay up to date with the videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next week.